What do you say, buddy? What do you say? How's my boy? How's my boy, huh? How's my buddy? How's my boy? What a good boy. What a magnificent fella. <clears throat> we got a beautiful day going on here today, boy. This is Uller. Now, Uller, I'm just going to check that camera, okay? You just give me a second. Let's hang on. Let me just check that I'm in the right spot. I'll tell you what, I'll just come down a little bit. There we go. Oh boy, what a good boy. Come by me, buddy. What a good boy. Hello. How's my boy? How's my buddy? Hey? How's my buddy? Yeah, that's my good boy. Come up here, brother. It's my boy. My boy. My boy. Now, I got a really good dog here today, boy. This is Uller. Uller is a Yamtand. He's a Swedish elk hound. And uh, we're in BC, Canada. And we're up hiking pretty high today. And I'm pretty played out already. Um, we've been on this trail one one other time, so there's a base for me as long as I stay on it. And uh, it's not one of my normal trails, but uh, I wanted to test Uller on a solo hike today, and uh, just see how his lock-in skills are, and his attention and focus and everything like that is and he's an absolutely amazing fella now uh, this breed of dog is one of the oldest breeds of dogs for hiking in this kind of terrain and they've uh, for centuries been uh, by the handler in this kind of terrain and uh, he's a extreme high prey drive uh, uh, bear hunting moose hunting lineage and uh, uh, the Yamtand is out of uh, the Jantland uh, region in Sweden and it's a, uh, a very high bear density populated area and so uh, they're very very stoic very calm very easy going dogs they, they're fearless dogs they don't get rattled by hardly any, well nothing rattles them and uh, they've been used for centuries over there this is the we're the only Jampton breeder in Canada in North America and uh, this is only the second litter that has been born here. So very, very unique dog. Now, uh, we've been raising elk hounds for, I, I grew up with them when I was a little kid, a little baby. And we've been raising them for a long time. And uh, we normally raise uh, uh, Norwegian elk hounds, but uh, we've had some Swedish dogs. And we went over and got the Jamtons uh, about three years ago. My brother and I went over and got Anya, and uh, Russ and Beth went over and got Rico, and we have a really nice pair. We got them from two of the master breeders over there. Now, what I wanted to accomplish on this uh, video today, while I'm uh, doing this solo hike, I want to talk about the instincts of this dog and uh, the Norwegian elk hound as well, because they run the same instincts. And I want to talk a little bit about training to the instinctive skills. This dog is bred to work with the handler in remote terrain and to be highly focused now. It's routine for this dog to go out a uh, mile, two kilometers, three kilometers and scout big regions looking for game. And if it was to be hunting season, for example, the, the hunters would send that dog out and that dog would, uh, let's just say you were in moose country, it'd find moose and it would actually hang with that moose and bark with that moose and let you know where that moose was and you can work your way up then and that dog will keep that moose busy and preoccupied 
it basically just kind of follows along with it and barks in its face a little bit when it stops. If the moose moves, it kind of just goes along with him, barks again in his face and moves along and uh, tells you where they are. And uh, it's got a very loud bark and it, it will bark for hours. The grandfather of this dog uh, got in a rugged region where Satu could not get to him. And she has a she has a fancy piece of software on her phone and the collar of the dog. And so she can GPS. I, I can't use GPS here uh, as well. Um, but neither here nor there. In Finland, she's got a real nice system. Anyway, the, the grandfather, his dog, he barked that moose for 40 hours before she was able to get to him. Because he kept moving and it was rugged. And uh, ran into nightfall and had to camp. And I mean, it was that, that dog was seriously uh, driven. And so uh, this is uh, the uh, the prey drive of this dog is the uh, strongest there is in the world of all dogs. It is a 4,000 year old hunting dog and a uh, uh, very, very skilled dog. Now, the old boys in Sweden, they all knew, and Finland, they all knew that if you sent a dog out, you had to have instinctive drive in that dog to come back and so every dog that's been raised for hundreds and hundreds of years now has a very very strong uh, handler focus meaning it will it will come back to the handler now I'm gonna turn he wants to stay over there I'll turn and that's okay we'll go where he is no sense filming me You stay there, boy. I'll come over there. I'll come over there. You want to stay up by that tree? We can go up there. Come on. We'll go up there. Good boy. You come by me. Come. He's got a little area then to play around in, and uh, and you go ahead, buddy. You go ahead. He's got a little area to play. That'll be all right. So the uh, the dog has been bred for extreme recall an instinctive drive to return to the handler. So you can send this dog out and it will return. Now, that's where training this dog varies from a lot of breeds. This dog, the Swedes for centuries have known that in order to keep that instinctive ability to return, there has to be huge motivation on the dog to want to return. They have to have a great deal of respect for the handler, they have to have a great deal of appreciation for the handler when they get there, and the handler has to show extreme affection when they arrive. Virtually in the history of this dog, as far back as you want to talk, and my ancestors talked for ten generations of this dog, and uh, not one of them put a correction on this dog. Not one of them used any negative reinforcement whatsoever. And it's the original, the very origin of positive dog training. And so their goal is to encourage that dog to be as happy as he can be when he returns to the handler and when he's working with the handler, to be absolutely as happy as possible. And so, there's never any corrections done at the handler. Um, they, they just, they do not believe 
that any of that uh, correction applies to this dog. So we apply no correction to the dog. So you'll see in almost all my videos, all my dogs will jump up and show affection. And it's, it's a trait that's in the dog to show me they're happy to be back, they want to be back, they're, they're there, and we stop. I sit down, the dogs come, they're excited, and then they can do their little roam, wait for me to have my lunch, this and that. But I never ever correct them, ever, when they come to me. And that is where a lot of people, they, they train this dog to be like a, a, uh, one of the other breeds, like I'll, I'll use a German Shepherd for lack of another phrase, but uh, German Shepherd, uh, Retriever, uh, whatever you like, uh, Malinois, it doesn't matter, but they'll, uh, they'll want all those same behaviors out of this dog. Now, not jam tons, let's just say nobody's even got one in North America, but uh, uh, the, the Norwegians, they all do that stuff. Lots of people try to do that style of training with it, and they run into head battles because the dog is so fearless and so used to working on his own in cooperation with the handler, not for the handler. They work in cooperation. And so they run into little snags with that. As a breeder, you see, I understand instinctive nature, so I always train to the instincts. Now, a person getting a dog of this caliber might not understand instincts as well. And so the instinctive skill of this dog is to constantly watch for me. And, and it, that's, all, that's all this little guy does. He's only 14 weeks old. We're on a remote hike in the middle of no man's land. He can go thousands of miles here. And his, his instinct is driving him to make these little circles. Now, if he was bigger, he would be out 100 yards. His big brother, Ark, he runs out 100, 200 yards, and he's like that. I can have my whole lunch, and Ark would come and check in and go, come and check in and go, come and check in and go. And he's, he's constantly moving. So training to the instinct of this dog is very, very good. Now... Here's the thing, this dog is used to working on a long lead, not a short lead, a long lead. It likes to either roam directly behind or directly ahead or go on one side or the other. That's my boy. That's my boy. That's my big boy, Uller. Good boy. Now this is a very, very personable dog. You just let me turn that camera down, buddy. Hang on, hang on, let me turn that down, let me turn that camera down, I want to make darn sure that I'm getting him in the picture there, boy, boy, well, maybe we'll go back over here buddy, it's brighter over here I think, it's a dull day with all the cloud and the snow, come by me buddy. personable dog this dog one owner dog very loyal to the handler um, Chris and his family are getting older he's going in to search and rescue the scentability of this dog is is intense and it's an air air scent dog so you uh, I'll, I'll tell you just on on that one aspect if you want to have less frustration out in the wilderness when you're hiking with this dog hike into the wind um, if you're hiking with the wind at your back, he's constantly wanting to turn around. And so you're constantly having to get him to come your direction. So just uh, just a mental note, pay attention what way the wind's blowing and hike that direction. Hike into the wind. He'd be really happy. And you have way less hassles, right? That's, that's training to the instincts, working to the instincts. Work toward what this guy likes. No. How about I give you my uh, glove instead, buddy? Here, you, you chew on that. Now, um, these guys, they're, uh, they're very, very calm dogs. So they're extremely good in game-rich areas. They, they're, uh, 
phenomenal in bear territory. Of course, the, the background of this dog is the highest population bear density uh, region in the world. And so that's where these dogs all originate from. And so the old timers would have their lunch and all the bears, they'd watch the bears walk around them and these dogs would sit and watch them, right? And that's the goal of these dogs is to watch their back, not run into a sow with cubs, cubs here, sow here. So these dogs are very good for that. Now, these dogs are big dogs. Uh, the father of this dog is 85 pounds. He stands about this high. He's a, he's a big boy. And uh, Uller will be a big fella. They're made for deep snow regions, so they, they like this. Now, these dogs need some work. You've got to work these dogs. Now, I'll tell you about training with these dogs. If you use all positive training and you've got patience, you can achieve remarkable things with this dog in very, very short time. Now, uh, this is a prime example of what you can achieve in a very short window of time. He's 14 weeks old, and he's hiking like a pro. I mean, uh, there's very few big dogs that would come out here and not want to go. And we, we uh, not today, but yesterday, on, back on this trail, back over on that side, uh, we were out with, I was out with Uller and uh, Snowshoe hair come burning right across, right? Now, prey drive kicks in, boy, he's hustling. And I've been working on his stop, and I let him have some fun. But then I said, stop, buy me. He looks, he wants to go. I said, buy me again. I get right down, come on, come boy, good boy. And he comes, right? Now that's that's high prey drive dog at, at 14 weeks. So if you if you focus with these little guys and work with them, you can achieve incredible things in short periods of time. Now, this whole notion of having a working breed like this that's bred for this type of work, and then trying to make this dog heal. Good luck with that, right? Because you're working right against the instincts. The instincts are not not to have him here. The instincts of him is to be out there where he can scout for you. So to make this dog heal is always a challenge. I never try and do it. Now I can keep them behind me and that's okay, but I, I never work with a dog on a heel. Now I will tell you that a dog of this caliber, when you're working with an elk hound, you want to make it as fun as you possibly can when he gets to you. And as far as working with uh, uh, training methods and clickers and uh, uh, little little training collars and all those things, I don't use them. I uh, do exactly what the old boys do: is simply positive reward. I never use a treat with this breed. Uh, none of the old boys ever did in Sweden either. They just don't believe in it. They believe only in positive praise. Now, keep in mind, I work with all intact dogs. All of mine are intact. And I work with 8, and 9, and 10, and 12, and 14 at a time. And I can come out here with 12 of them. And so, it's, uh, I'm not a dog trainer. I'm a dog breeder and a remote trained dog handler. There's a difference. A dog trainer would, uh, would take a golden retriever and have him sit, stay, down, up, down, up, down, stop, roll over, fetch. That, you know, they take a Malinois and show them bite work. Um, they could uh, put a Doberman into personal protection work, that sort of thing. Um, that's that's what a dog trainer is. A uh, remote terrain dog handler takes an instinctive dog for a remote terrain and, and handles that dog and manages the instinctive skill of this dog. And so this dog is going into search and rescue, which is perfect. However, all the search and rescue people uh, don't understand how an air scent dog like this works and so they always want a certain track if, if the person went like this and he's sitting over here incapacitated they want the dog to follow like this and end up here but this guy if you let's say the winds blowing from here if you put Uller out here and he knows this is the guy you want him to find Uller's just gonna go straight to him he's gonna bypass all these the ground scent dogs because he's an air scent dog, he's just going to go there. Now, a lot of people, you see, they reprimand dogs for for all this. They teach leave. Now, a dog trainer, you see, would teach leave. 
Now me, I never worry about that crap by me. Like when he, he's by me. This is a dollar pair of gloves or a couple dollar pair of gloves. Am I doing a, this is a $25,000 dog. What am I going to worry about a pair of gloves for, right? So I keep the dog happy while he's by me. I, I don't have any of my dogs that understand leave. They, if I can walk up and take anything from any of my dogs and they're happy to share it back with me and it's totally fine. But I don't teach leave. Um, this breed of dog, I want to work in partnership with him. I'm not the boss of this dog. I'm in partnership with him. I never use that old dated concept of alpha and you're the boss and they got to submit and they got to do it. That's all garbage for this breed of dog. I'm not telling you how to train your dog, but I never use that concept, okay? Clickers and all those things out here, we don't bother. Now, this dog is very, very visual. So, hand signs are a big, big deal with this dog. Now, you'll hunt silent with these dogs all the time, right? I've had his mom out, and her and I, we've been hunting silent, and I'll, I'll put on all my soft clothes, I'll put on my moccasins. I mean, we're, we're, we're like little Indians in the bush, her and I, and we're, we're trucking through, and I'll have her on lead, and she's leading me to stuff, right? And she's so silent. She's so good. Now, elk hounds hunt silent, just so you know, till they're right in the face of stuff. So you can hunt on a lead with them. And uh, they're, they're stealthy, and they're going through the bush, and her and I are working through. And uh, we're doing our absolute best to not make any noise, and she'll lead me right to game, right? At four months, she had two bucks mesmerized for me, and I thought, wow, that's tough. Whitetail are hard to stop, right? But she stopped them. She's, I don't know how many moose she's found for me. And a very, very good dog. Now, her mother is the Finnish bear champion, or a Finnish bear champion. And uh, very, very skilled dog. The, the background of this dog, of course, every dog in the background of it is a hunting champion. Every dog. And so, uh, right back to the start of the association. This is a founding line. So you can trace this back to the very founding line of dogs. Um, we spent a great deal of time researching this breed and we want